Okay, we have a very talented Harold Perkins of LSU. We'll start with questions here on the front row. E.P. Stedham, A.P. Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Harold, your coach said you'd be playing between the tackles and then be using other positions uh, based on the situation. How do you feel about this role? Uh, I feel good about it. I'm confident in my coaches and my teammates um, to put me in the right position to be successful and make plays. So, yeah, I'm confident. I love to move. Okay, on the aisle here. Uh, Abby Williams, OU Knightley from Norman. Being so dominant in that linebacker position, how much have you watched Oklahoma's Danny Stutzman, and do you see any similarities between yours and his game? Can you repeat your question? Abby, oh, sorry. Um, Danny Stutzman from Oklahoma, do you see any similarities between your game and his game? Who is that? Oklahoma's linebacker, Danny Stutzman. Um, to be honest, I don't really <laughs> – I ain't really watching nobody else play. I'm focused on myself and my teammates, and just focus on getting better. So, okay. Wyatt Nunn, KMU8 Sports. Uh, what has uh, new defensive coordinator Blake Baker brought to the team so far? I'll probably just say just a, a loving um, working environment. Um, Coach Baker, Joe, to have around the building. Um, he's the uh, DC, but you know, obviously, he's my coach. He's my position coach. So, my first time meeting him, uh, he came came out to out, out to practice with some cleats on, and it made me laugh a little bit because, you know, what I'm saying they just speak to the testament of what he is. You know, what I'm saying he he coming out here, he wants you to work, but he's also he's putting in the work too. You know, what I'm saying he's not just out here just telling us what to do. He's showing us how to do it. So that's one thing that I love about him. Front row. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Harold, what's it going to be, what's it going to take for you to be successful this year? What, do you, what does success look like to you? And, and I guess, you know, in the physicality of playing inside, how can you ensure that you have the most success? Um, just knowing that um, everything's not going to be perfect, you know what I'm saying? Everything's not going to pan out and play out that, the way that you want it to. And just be ready to play adversity, you know what I'm saying? And be ready to deal with it and not running from it. I'll say that. Right side, third row. Mason Young, Tulsa World. Harold, just curious for your thoughts on gonna be, there's going to be a, now iPads and, and video replay available on the sideline. How beneficial do you think that's going to be for you guys this upcoming season? Can you repeat your question? How beneficial is it going to be to have video replay available to you on the sideline this season? Um, I think that's a magnificent idea, you know what I'm saying, to come – and come to the sideline and see yourself making a play or just the mistake, saying because I well, wait till tomorrow to see what I messed up on when I can go to the sideline and fix the mistake or the problem right then and there instead of waiting. So I think that'll be a great addition to the game for all college athletes. Left side, Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Harold, you know, going back to you know your recruitment and going to LSU, how difficult of a decision was that? You know, flipping from from A and M and to to LSU. Um, it was a difficult decision. Um, it was a moment that I feel that I have no regrets on, but it was for sure a difficult decision. Now that you're in Baton Rouge, what's it like playing against A&M every year, and, and what's that game kind of dynamic like for you? Um, it's fun. You know, obviously the guys on that team, you know, and coaches and stuff, we have a history a little bit of a history. So, you know, I know them, you know me. So it's not like a surprise, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it'd be a fun game, though, when we play them. Right side, third row. Chessa Boucher with NBC 33 in Baton Rouge. You talked a little bit about Blake Baker and busting out the cleats. Have you ever had a coach do that? And what have you just learned from him? And what's going through your mind as you see him there with the cleats on? Um, to answer your question, no, I never had a coach, you know what I'm saying, come out and wear cleats and show me how it's done, quote, unquote. <laughs> but um, great guy, um, great guy. He's a leader. Um, and he just wants the best for his players and his team. You know, he knows how to have fun. But when it's time to work, he is no jokes. It's time to work. Fourth row in the aisle. Daniel Brown, KTBS TV in Shreveport. Not sure if you had a chance to really interact with him much since he's in a different position group. But freshman Gabriel Relaford on the defensive line. What are you expecting from him as he contributed in the spring, and what do you want him to contribute there in the fall? Um, Gabe is somebody, someone that I've been watching, 
you know, quietly. You know what I'm saying? He humble. He put in the work every day. He come in every day. And he he busts his tail to be the best. You know what I'm saying? He he that for real. I just watch him put in the work. You know what I'm saying? He remind me of myself just coming in. You know, not trying to step on nobody's toes. I just want to be the best. I'm here to take somebody's spot. So that's what he kind of remind me of myself a little bit, just in that remark. You know, quiet and just trying to put in the work and just be great. On the aisle in the back. Uh, Adam Ogburn with uh, K10 now, Sherman, Texas. Uh, Harold, you obviously went to high school in Texas. You were offered by Texas and Oklahoma. So can you talk a little bit about kind of what you think those two schools are going to bring to this conference? Um, I think it's a great – I think Texas and Oklahoma is a great addition to the SEC. Um, I obviously feel – and some of y'all might feel the same that the SEC is the best brand of football that you can play at the college level. And um, just adding those two great universities to the SEC – can't do nothing but help the SEC go up and help their school go up too. So I think it's a great addition. On the left of the back. Uh, Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. We had uh, Coach Kelly in here, and he, he talked about moving you from, from the outside to the inside. He thought that maybe on the outside teams could scheme to, 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 to play away from your side of, of the ball. That, that's going to be tougher with, with you in the middle. Can you just talk about the transition that is for you to, to move from, from the outside to the inside and what you're looking forward to this season? Um, the transition for me has been wonderful. Um, like I said previously, I trust my coaches to put me in the right position to be successful. And um, the rest is on me. <laughs> like, I trust in my abilities and my, and my qualities that God has blessed me with to go out and make a play. So I'm excited to see where this year going to go. All right. Uh, Eric Bailey with Tulsa World. Piggybacking off the OU Texas question, can you talk a little bit about Brent Venables, his recruiting style, and uh, just the kind of defensive coach that he is at Oklahoma? Um, to be quite frank and honest with you, I don't really know too much about him. But I'm pretty sure he's a great guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Oklahoma defense, I feel, should be good this year. Obviously, there's no sleepers in the SEC. So I feel like they're going to be a good team. Maybe you can be familiar with, too. Uh, he's not your position coach, but Kerry Cooks, he was a former Oklahoma assistant. Can you talk a little bit about Coach Cooks? Yeah, Coach Cooks is a great guy. Um, obviously, last year he was our safety coach. Um... And he was in a room with a guy, or one of my roommates, uh, Major Burns. So, uh, yeah, Coach Cooks is a great guy. Um, love, love him, and want the best for him. Last question here in the front. I can't imagine you living with Major. He talks so much, and you don't. So, um, just the defensive front. A lot of concern in Baton Rouge. You know, obviously having to add some new players in there. What are you seeing in, in the tackles specifically? Maybe that gives you a lot of hope for the line this year. Um. We're big up front. That's something that I love. And they're aggressive, you know. They're not passive. Um, you know, he took a hit losing Mason, you know, my brother Big Two. So I'm excited for the guys that we got in there because um, they big, you know what I'm saying? And then you add the addition with Coach Bo. You know what that could do. Um, I don't even got to speak on Coach Bo. Y'all know his work. <laughs> so, yeah. Harold, good job. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all. Okay, we have LSU's Mason Taylor to kick off Media Days 2024. We'll start here in the front row on the left with a question. AP. Good morning, Mason. Good morning. Uh, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we say, at Syndicated Radio. Mason, what are you trying to do this year that you haven't done in your past career, and how have you tried to improve over the uh, summertime here? I think just being consistent, um, showing the coaches I can, I can hold a lot on my plate. Um, I'm ready for the opportunity, so just proving to my coaches and my quarterback that I can be open, I can have a lot on my plate, is uh, one thing that I'm focusing on this year, and just being consistent. Right side, fourth row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. What, what can you say about uh, Garrett and the, and the, and the, uh, the offseason he's had? He's had a tremendous offseason. I mean, he stepped in as a leader from day one, and he's done a great job of getting our team on the right path. Um, he's done a great job of learning from experiences from Jaden and stuff like that. So he definitely has waited his turn. He's been patient. I think he's uh, fit to have a great year this year. Front row. Hey, Mason. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, Brian talked about having success with tight ends. And obviously the <coughs> offense will look a little different this year. But, you know, now that it's almost 
you know, your turn, I guess. Um, how, how much do you plan on being a part of this offense? How different can it look for the tight ends, you know, as far as being actively involved as pass catchers? Like, you've had moments, but, but being a real integral part of this offense. Yeah, I think we lost some production last year or this year with uh, BT and Malik leaving, so I think there's definitely room for opportunity. And I think the receiver group has done a great job of stepping in. And as a tight end group and tight end unit, I think this is really important for us to step in and show the coaches what we could do. And um, that starts with in practice. So we got to prove that we can uh, make those type of plays and then we can fill in this, these holes for this offense. On the aisle, on the back. Kennedy Wright with CBS 42, arguably one of your best receptions of your college career against Bama back in 2022. Are we excited going up against them again this season? Yeah, it's, it's a great game every time we play them. I mean, Alabama's one of the best college football teams in the country. So, um, like, like we said, in the SEC, you play the best. So, it's uh, definitely going to be fun. Um, it's definitely competitive, and it's definitely a great game. So, it'll be fun. On the aisle, and then pass the microphone up. Piggybacking off that a little bit, I mean, it's a, it's a different schedule this year. No division play anymore. Some common opponents for LSU, including Auburn, aren't on the schedule. What, what's a couple of games you've got circled as, as, as games you're really looking forward to this year? Just all the SEC games. I mean, like I said, it's competitive. So those are the, those are the best games. Those are the most fun. And I think as long as we prepare for them, we'll have a uh, successful season. Left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Um, you know, kind of going off that schedule theme um, with how different the schedule is now that, um, you know, traditionally you've been playing Texas A&M that, that last game of the season. Just kind of what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, do you think it's a rivalry and, and just not playing it the last game of the season this year? I'd say I'd say it's a it's a big game. I mean, uh, any game in SEC is a big game. Any game on our schedule is a big game. So, um, like I said, they they moved around the schedules a little bit, but not much change. Um, you're still playing in the SEC, you're still playing the best. So, um, it's definitely looking forward to it. On the outside, uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. This is new territory for Oklahoma. What can Oklahoma fans and the Oklahoma football team expect of a road trip to LSU? Just uh, great fans and rowdy fans. I think um, it's definitely going to add to the competitive level. Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC, I think it's a great thing. And I think it will definitely be fun to, to see this year. In the back, left side. Um, WAF 48 in Huntsville, Kander. Um, ESPN, or sorry, EA Sports College Football 25 coming out. Just tell me uh, how excited are you to be able to play that and maybe even say your face on there. Oh, it's definitely uh, really exciting. I remember as kids, um, Playing that game, it's extremely fun. And now being in it, it's a dream. So I'm um, pretty sure the early access came out today. So I'm looking forward to getting back to Baton Rouge and, and playing tonight. So it's definitely going to be a fun thing. Third row, left side. Bob Ballou, CBS Austin. How many touchdowns does Harold need to score to get in the Heisman conversation this year? And uh, just what kind of leader has he become for you guys? He's became a, a tremendous leader. I mean, he's taken that defense on his back, and I think – um, him and guys like Greg Penn, that whole linebacker group as a whole, uh, has has uh, stepped up. And I think Perk knows it's his time. It's his junior year. He needs a lead. And I think he's done a tremendous job of doing it within team runs, play around practice, and, and just practice throughout. Left side. You know, with the 12 team playoff now, is it, what kind of are your expectations you know, as a team? Do you guys talk about, you know, the goal, top 12, getting into the playoff, or kind of what, what are your preseason kind of conversations like as a, uh, as a team? I think just, just being consistent uh, week in and week out. I mean, as long as we stick to our process of winning game by game, by game and being where your feet are, I think we'll be uh, fine. I mean, it, it opens more opportunity with 12 teams being in the playoffs, so that's definitely exciting. And as long as we do what we do, uh, LSU, uh, we'll be all good. Right side on the aisle. Jaden had such a remarkable career at LSU, and, and the first couple games, you know, it was, it was a bit of a struggle before the offense. The first couple games of his career at LSU, a bit of a struggle before, before things got rolling. What, what did you see out of, uh, out of Jaden as far as how he improved over his two years as LSU starter and, and anything you, you took away from, from watching him work? Mm -hmm. Starting as a new offense, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to get going. It's hard to get momentum. So, I mean, Jaden did a great job of kind of jump-starting and kick-starting it to get everyone on page. And I think um, he did a great job as a quarterback, and he kind of lifted us up and, um, to compete and practice and get better every single day and to hold us to the standard of LSU. Left side. What does, it, what does it mean to be here and represent LSU? Obviously, you know, Brian talked about 
a top 10 pick being left at home in Will Campbell, but you and Perk both being selected to come here. What does it mean to you and what does it mean to Harold? Oh, it's a great honor. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things about SEC Media Day, so I'm definitely excited. And it's a it's an honor. It's a blessing um, to be here. So I'm glad to represent LSU. We'll go on up here. If you don't mind, another Oklahoma-based question. What are your thoughts of Oklahoma? What do you know about Oklahoma? I just know they're a great team. I mean, they're coming in the SEC, so they got to have some type of talent. Um, they have great players, and it's a great program, uh, rich with winning. So definitely be exciting to play in, um, play in those games. Front row and then pass it. Just the tight end room in general, what can you tell me about the other guys? They're, it seems like they've you know, obviously gotten bigger and stronger and, and maybe a little bit more of a threat to, to catch the ball and not just be blockers. Yeah, I think we have a great tight end room. Coach Nagel has done a great job of pushing us every single day. Uh, we had a great spring. And I think we're, we've been closer than we ever had before. And I think um, just be, creating that bond within each other and um, pushing each other to be the best every single day is going to make us great. So, Final two questions. We'll go here and then there. Mason, what's slightly different about Garrett as a quarterback versus Jaden? I think it's, uh, it's, it's similar in, in, in some sense. I think we have the same offense, so um, not much is going to change. Um, Jaden was great with his legs. Um, I think Nuss has some wheels, and people don't know that. So, um, But, of course, Jaden Daniels is Jaden Daniels. He's, he was a tremendous for us, but Nuss learned a lot from him. So I think he's going to do a great job. He's learned from one of the best to do it, um, and he's learned from a Heisman winner. So he's definitely going to have a great year this year. Last question. Your, uh, your dad and your uncle are both very significant former football players, just lessons you've learned uh, from, from them over the years, th things that you've been able to observe. Just to be where your feet are, um, be consistent, and just uh, be where your feet are mostly. Don't look ahead. Don't look behind. If you make, everyone's going to make mistakes. Kind of just keep moving and keep pushing through that. Mason, thank you very much. Thank you all. The questions will start here on the second row on the aisle. Hi, Abby Williams, OU Knightley from Norman. Um, for a team like Oklahoma, getting to play in Tiger Stadium for the first time, how would you kind of describe that experience? Yeah, there's no experience uh, like Tiger Stadium at night. Uh, Death Valley at night is, is, is unlike anything in college football. Um, but, you know, I think OU and Texas both, you know, they've, they've already played in games in, at, at big stages. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be anything new to them. Um, but I will say that, that Death Valley is, is something special. Fifth row on the right. Andre Champagne, WABTD. Um, Garrett, even though you lose Malik and Brian, can you speak to the depth of the receiving room and uh, how being deep in that room might help to y'all advantage in situational football? You know. Yeah. No, I think our our receiver group as a unit, they've really stepped up. Um, you know, they understand the standard that they're going to be held to being a receiver. You know, at LSU. Uh, you know, obviously we just had two first round draft picks and, and two first rounders. You know, in the past couple of years with Jets and Jamar, and you know, and you look at the history of LSU receivers, it's special. So there's a standard that you're held to, um, you know, playing receiver at LSU. And I think our entire room and our entire unit, they accept that. Um, and they, they view it as a challenge. You know, they view it as their opportunity to be that guy now. Um, and, you know, I think they've all stepped up really, really big this offseason into those shoes. Right side, front row. Mason Young, Tulsa World. Garrett, a lot of quarterbacks from this league were at the, the Manning Academy together recently. Just curious if you got to know Jackson Arnold from OU at all and, and what you thought of what you saw from him there. Yeah, I got to spend a lot of time with Jackson, actually. Um, you know, I really like him a lot as an individual. Um, and as a player, he's very talented. Um, you know, I think he's going to excel this year. I think he's going to do a really, really good job for OU, and I'm excited to watch him. Front row. Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV in Baton Rouge. I think we all expect Chris and Kyron to have big years, but who are some of those next, you know, group receivers that we should really expect to see things from? Yeah, I think – you know, CJ uh, and Xavion Thomas, um, Aaron Anderson, Kyle Parker. I think that whole group of guys, they're all very talented. Um, and I think they're all going to do very special things. So, On the aisle and then pass it forward. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Gary, it, it's an era where quarterbacks uh, tend to move around, especially when they're not receiving playing time. You, you've been waiting your turn at LSU these last couple of years as, as Jaden Daniels had his, uh, his, his outstanding career. Uh, can you talk about the temptation uh, to leave for somewhere else where you would have uh, been receiving playing time the last couple of years and the factors that led you to uh, to stay and, and, and represent LSU here? 
Yeah, I mean, there was obviously temptation. Um, you know, I love playing the game of football. So, you know, obviously I wanted to be playing on Saturdays. Uh, but, you know, what kept me to stay was I felt like when I was making my decision out of high school where to go to school, I felt like, you know, there was a lot of prayer involved and God brought me to LSU for a reason. Uh, and I did not feel like it was my time and, and to just pack up and leave. Uh, you know, I felt like it was my duty to just keep my head down and trust into his timing uh, and just work. You know, I know God's God's timing is always right. You know, sometimes we want things right away, um, and that's not how it's supposed to be. So, you know, hopefully it'll pay off in the long run. Um, you know, so I would say I just, you know, felt like I had to trust in him and keep my head down. Front row. AP Stadium, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Garrett, what have you done this summer to concentrate on getting better, and what did you learn at the Manning Passing Academy had a chance to visit? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me this offseason has just been building relationships with my teammates, uh, spending more time with them out, not just in the building, but also outside the building, um, you know, because I think that that's where it starts on the field is, you know, the amount of time and hours that you've spent, you know, off the field getting to know them, uh, knowing them inside and out, you know, not just as players, but also as people. Um, you know, also at the Manning Passing Academy, it's been an unreal experience for me uh, getting to go twice. Just, you know, the amount of experience and smart minds out there, just, you know, getting to pick their brains uh, and learn different things from them. Uh, it's an awesome experience, and I'm super thankful for the Manning family uh, for having me. On the aisle, right side. Gavin Bax at ESP and the ticket of Montgomery. Uh, your father, Doug, had a long career playing and, and as a coach. What kind of influence has he been as you head into your first year as a starter? Yeah, I mean, it's been huge. Our relationship has meant the world to me. Uh, just having, you know, him to be able to, uh, you know, give feedback and, and bounce different ideas off of has been, you know, unreal. Um, you know, he was able to accomplish everything that I dream of accomplishing. Um, and so getting to have somebody like that in my life uh, who can, you know, guide me, I guess you could say that way, uh, it's, it's special. Um, you know, and I'm very, very thankful for our relationship. Our row. Uh, Eric Bailey with Tulsa World. What are, being the newcomer, what are your perceptions of Oklahoma? What do you know about Oklahoma and its history? Yeah, you know, I know that Oklahoma was a very story program. Um, you know, just being a fan of college football growing up, you know, getting to watch different things. Um, you know, I was a big fan of Baker Mayfield, you know, getting to watch him play and, and the talent that he had. Uh, so, you know, I think both OU and Texas are very storied programs. Um, you know, I think adding them into the SEC uh, only is, you know, does good for the game. Uh, you know, it creates a more competitive environment in the already most competitive conference in, in all of college football. Um, so, you know, I think it's great for the conference and I think it's great for the game. Left side. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Garrett, I don't know, maybe as a freshman, did you have the opportunity to work with uh, Tommy Moffitt, the strength and conditioning coach? Just yeah. your thoughts on, on Tommy as a, as a coach and kind of what he, um, how he helps develop players. Yeah, Coach Moffitt does an unbelievable job. Um, you know, he's a very tough love type of guy. And, you know, he, if he taught me anything, it was definitely mental toughness. Um, you know, Coach Moffitt, you know, I love him to death. You know, I think he's going to do a really, really good job over at a and um, You know, I'm very happy for him, very excited for him. Um, and I think he's a very, very special person, a very, very special coach. Right side, back row. Harrison Vatt in the KLB 5 Sports. Garrett, have you heard much or any advice from former LSU quarterback Joe Burrow? Um, has he given anything to you, or if not, um, what can you kind of take from his story where he wasn't a starter at first, then came into LSU and had a lot of success, obviously won a championship. So is there anything from his story that you can maybe can take and put into your um, quarterback days? Yeah, I mean, his story is very special. Um, you know, he, he had to wait his time as well. So, you know, just, just watching him and what he was able to accomplish in his two years at LSU is, is unreal. Um, you know, hopefully if I'm anywhere close to as good as him, you know, I'll be happy. So, Final two questions here and then the front row. Trevor Denton, uh, Way 31. Garrett, you've played in some high-pressure situations at this point in your career. One of those was stepping in in the middle of the game uh, against Alabama last year. What did you learn from that specific situation on the road at Bryant-Denny, having to play in a, a huge rivalry game like that? What did you learn from that day? Yeah, you know, I've been blessed with the opportunity to step into some pretty tough situations. Um, you know, I feel like they've only made me better as a player. Um, and, you know, now, you know, getting the experience and the preparation as well as the starter, I think it will only help even more. Um, so, you know, yeah, that, that experience at Alabama, the, the SEC championship against Georgia, um, you know, the end of the game against Auburn, uh, you know, I've been thrown in, in, into some, some tough situations, but it's only made me better. Um, and I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And, and you know, even, even the times when I failed, just, just learning from them um, and hopefully, you know, just continuing, uh, as always, to just, you know, try and push to be better. Final question. Uh, for your five offensive linemen returning, two of them started as freshmen at the tackle spot. How is DJ fitting in, and what do you see in that group, and how can they be a strength for you? 
Yeah, DJ has done a really, really good job uh, as he stepped in. Um, you know, that's a hard position uh, to, to kind of step into. Um, but, you know, I think he's done an unbelievable job. He's very talented. Uh, he's very smart and he cares. He wants to be great. He wants to get better. And, you know, he's got a, a lot of very, very talented guys around him. Garrett, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you all.